No, we haven't had an accident. I've decided to fit some reversing lights. And I didn't want them just coming on the simple way by linking them to the reversing lights at the back lights. I wanted a separate switch here so I can switch them on and off from the dash because the reversing lights are a bit bright to use on the road. They're for probably just for wild camping. So I've bit the bullet since we're on lockdown and I've gone to the process of putting this cable. It's quite a thick core cable with a good covering. Um, the full length of the chassis through the bonnet through the wiring harness and into here. I've drilled a hole here and fitted this little switch. Oh, what fun. I'm also wearing the Greg Vergo approved safety glasses that he sent me. Thanks, Greg. <laughs> because I'm laid underneath the van tie wrapping cables to the underneath of the chassis and all the mud keeps falling off into my eyes. Do you like the lockdown hair? It's coming on, isn't it? I'll look a right yeti by the time I've finished this. Anyway, let's get on with the job. So I don't know if you can see this, but this big cable here, this one here, is um, the one that's going through this rubber boot. I'll put another tie wrap around that where all the cables go through. Down into the cover between the wheel arch and the plastic cover. So it's behind this plastic thing. And then it comes out of here and I need to tar wrap it all the way down to the chassis to the back which is thick dust and mucky and awkward but the worst thing about any wiring job is running the cables I didn't want them on the roof because uh, on the roof they get in the way of where my canoes and kayaks are going to roll up and underneath the roof rack I've got my uh, security cameras my CCTV cameras so I decided I'm down here and this will give a broad bring to one side and to the other side and just give me some extra light for when I'm wild, wild camping, packing up. So to fit these, quite straightforward, I've literally drilled through this piece of the van and slotted some bolts through, as you can see, and then put some nuts on those so they're secure and then put some self-locking nuts underneath there and they're all stainless. So they're out the way, they're higher up than the actual step and the tow bar. So hopefully they shouldn't get hit. Lots of people when they're building camper vans or doing alterations to the cars and caravans and things use these type of connectors. Various fittings, round ones, square ones, male and female. different sizes for different cables and some of them are insulated but the problem with all of these is they're aluminium and they do fussed up and you're relying on just that squeeze against the cable if there's any movement it can cause friction it can build up some carbon in there and it can stop working after a while so I like to solder my wires together particularly if they're outside so this video shows you how to use a soldering iron to solder cables together so you don't have to use all these and you'll get a real good waterproof seal um, that's shrink wrapped and a good connection and it should stop you having problems like you tend to get with using these type of connectors. Um, I used to do lots of wiring on boats. Uh, I had a friend who run a boat company building rigid inflatable dive boats and I used to wire all the electrics up and also on the lifeboat that was a coxswain on I used to do lots of wiring on that and these at sea or in any water will just die they'll just corrode up straight away so we always use soldered connections and shrink wrap to make sure the water tight so this will just give you an indication of how they work. So what I've got here is the cable that actually comes out the light just two core this is the cable I've soldered to the same light on the other side, 2 core. And then this is the thick cable, which is 2 core, that runs the full length of the chassis. So what I'm going to do now is tin all these wires, which basically means putting solder onto all the ends, and then join all three of these together and shrink wrap them together to make a watertight seal. And then I can neaten all the cables up underneath and sort out the front end of the job. Now I'm a bit old school, I don't have any fancy wires and uh, strippers, I basically do it the old fashioned way.
I don't use anything fancy just a pair of snips and when you've done it as many times as I have it becomes second nature So for tinning the wires, it's a bit like welding, I used to be a welder as well, but the key to tinning and soldering is getting comfy. So I don't have any fancy clamps or anything, this is a very old cheap soldering iron, it's probably about five quid off eBay, and as you can see the tip's quite knackered, but it does the job for this. You know we scrape some of the dirt off on the concrete before you use it. And to tin, I literally just put heat one side, solder the other, as the wire warms up, it turns the actual wire silver. And the key, as I say, for soldering and for welding is getting comfy. This solder is flux solder, so it's actually got built in flux into the actual solder. So there you see, those two wires are now tinned. And I'll do the others now. So soldering iron one side to warm up the wire and the solder on the other and it'll just run down the wire and give it all the silver coating of solder. That's all you have to do. So to get the waterproof connection as well as tinning them together to make a good connection rather than using spade connectors we use these shrink wraps and you literally just slide these on, warm them up with a soldering iron or an hot air gun and they'll um, shrink and make a watertight seal for you. But the thing with this is you've got to remember to put them on before you solder everything together because they have to be slid on. So them two will be thick enough to take the three wires when they're all soldered together. I'm going to put another big cover over the top of it. So I'm going to slide one over this first and then over the other connecting wires to make sure I can shrink, shrink wrap it all together. Well, these are the bigger ones. And as I say, the key with this is remembering to put them on before you solder everything together. <laughs> She'll solder it all together and think, oh bloody hell, I forgot to put the shrink wrap on. Now I've trimmed that back, but I've left it on because I can fold that back over. And then I'm going to put the two other bits of shrink rack on. You need to have them some distance away from where you're soldering so they don't get too hot and shrink wrap to the wrong place. You just need to hold those on place for now, for when you've got it all soldered together. Now to make life a little bit easier when we're going to solder some wires together, is if we take two wires that you want to solder together and you want them holding next to each other so if you take another piece of shrink wrap you can actually hold those two bits of wire together with the shrink wrap and that holds them close together and stops it being so fiddly you can line those up and the shrink wrap I'll, as I say you can use a hot air gun and even use a lighter some people but I just use the edge of the soldering iron and as you see as you apply heat obviously don't put too much on you don't want to melt it completely through but it holds up to its name and it shrinks those together holding those two close together making it easier to solder now to sweat those together we just literally apply some heat to one side, I put a little bit of extra solder on and it warms up the solder on both wires and uses a bit of solder from the actual fresh solder to sweat them together. Same again, 
So choose the wires you want to join together. Slide a little bit of shrink wrap on for now. Just hold them together. Shrink that down. somewhere makes it nice and comfy for you apply heat to both the wires at the back and as the solder warms up on the wires they'll fuse together we call it sweating and then just run a bit of solder down the joint. If you get a lump in it you can just smooth it off with your soldering iron but there you have two really good strong connectors. So if you was just soldering two wires together there you are you put shrink wrap on and you'd be done. But I'm linking three lots of here so I'm just gonna trim them up with a pair of snips and then bring the next set of wires in to sweat those together. You could do with three hands with this one or some sort of jig to hold it together. So I put a bit of solder on the end of the soldering iron and bringing my positive lines together joining them on top of each other and I'm going to sweat them together with that extra bit of solder and uh, just leave it to dry and there we have a really good connection you see that if there is any lumps or bumps or anything you can snip those off or just rub over it with a soldering iron and smooth it off solder on the soldering iron, bring the other line across on top, warm it up and they'll sweat together. As I say if you've got somebody to help you that makes life a lot easier. There we go, you see that there? Two real good strong connectors there now. Out the shrink wrap. So that shrink wrap will go over those connectors like that. Just slide it along. That shrink wrap will go over that one. So again, just rub it with a soldering iron. Just be careful you don't overheat them because you don't want to melt anything. As you can start to see now, they are really shrinking nice and tight. It's going to give you a good waterproof seal. A lot better than crimp connectors and wrapping it in electrical tape. Might be a bit of faffing about, but you're less likely to have any problems with your wiring if you do it this way. As you can see, I can fold the cable covers back over now, as I left them on, and then I bring the other shrink wrap over the top. So I'll shrink this one first and bring those over the top, and then bring that one over top of that one, and make it even more waterproof. And with it all being black, it'll look a good connector as well. So this one will slide over top of that one now. And as you see, we're getting like a tapered effect. These shrimp shrink wrap kits are very cheap. I think the full box of all those was about 10 quid off eBay. I'll see if I can find it and put it in the link below. bring the bigger ones across now shrink wrap those on over the top again you've got to remember as well that this connector is going to be underneath the van behind the back wheels and it's going to get covered in mud crap and all sorts of stuff 
So there we go. A very good tight waterproof seal and a very good connection. Another way to do a solid connection always remember to put your shrink wrap on first or you'll be really annoyed. Just take the two ways you want to solder together wrap them together like so not to burn Louis's bed you just run the solder iron one side solder the other and tin both wires together and that again gives you a good strong connection like so wait till it's cooled down a bit snip it back fold it flat and push your shrink wrap over the top ready to shrink wrap down saying that about not soldering on Louis's bed reminds me when I used to repair TVs in people's houses and if you used to get a rubber mat to put down so you didn't drop any solder on the carpet but if you did drop any solder on the carpet you'd always ask for a cup of tea and get your snips out and start trimming the solder off the carpet <laughs> true professional there we go another good connector so a bit of solder on your iron Heat below the wire, solder on the tap as the wire warms up, run the solder down. Leave it to cool. Once it's cooled down, you can trim off the excess. Flatten it down. Push your shrink wrap over the top. And rub the iron up and down it. create the cover and the seal. Cheaper way of doing this is than using bullet connectors and things or inline connectors and you always tend to run out of them the damn things. They are okay for internal use but they are tend to be aluminium and they can fussed up if they get damp and give you a bad connection and they're only crimped together they're not actually soldered on. You can solder them on which obviously gives you a better connection but not as good as this. There you go. Nice, safe, and a very strong connection. So I've fitted a little switch on here through the ignition. So I've gone into the fuse box and found a fuse supply that comes live with the ignition. Taking a supply to here, and then from here, underneath the van, through the bonnet, all the way down the back to actually get the cable to the back to the lights. These are the things I've used. So these are shrink wraps. This is about 10 quid off eBay, I think, something like that. A very cheap old fashioned soldering iron, some flux solder, a pair of pliers, a pair of snips, a load of tie wraps, and some wire. Oh uh -huh.